These are time-based fair value gaps. It uses fair value gaps printed at certain times of the day for us to then take our trades off. Just like these two examples right here. We're currently on the three minute chart. Now let's take a look at the back tested trades. You see we have 47 trades, we just under 50% accuracy. We have a profit factor of 1.792. Here's another pair. Same thing, 38 trades, 52% profitable, 2.6 profit factor. Here's another pair. Starts off in a bit of a dip and then we close it back strong. 44 trades, 56% accuracy and 1.692 profit, profit factor. Now let's take a look at the source code. Here it is here. That's all we're looking at. 100, 130 lines, just under. And we're just going to delete it. In this video, we're going to be making these from scratch. If you want to just skip straight to the end and play around with the source code, you can join my free Discord. The link will be in the description. I've got source code for this one, source code for all my previous videos, and plenty other free stuff that you can try out and download. All right, let's just jump right into the video. So I went and created a new strategy. I just went up to open, new strategy. We've named it time based fair value gaps. I've gone ahead and written a game plan for today's video. The first thing that we need to do is we're just gonna get the fair value gaps. It doesn't matter about the time. That's step one. We're just gonna print all of them and then go from there. Step two is then we're gonna add in the time restriction. We're gonna restrict everything else other than the specific time that we want. And we only, gonna, we only wanna print that first fair value gap in that time frame. Step three is we're going to get the pivot points for the stop loss. So we're going to put our stop loss behind the most recent pivot high or pivot low, and we need to get pivot points for those. Step four is just adding it all together. So we're going to use the fair value gap as our entry. We're going to use the pivot points as our like stop loss, and then adding it all together and taking our trades. That's the game plan. Let's get started. Let's get this out of the way and let's get started on our fair value gaps. So we created two variables here, one bull FEG and one bear FEG. And these are going to give us our fair value gaps. So the, for the bullish fair value gap, this needs to be true as well as this needs to be true. And then if both of those are true, we've got, a bull, we've got ourselves a bullish fair value gap. The same for the bearish, if this is true and this is true, we've got a bearish fair value gap. And these fair value gaps, you can notice, are just candlestick patterns. So now what we've done is, now if if we do have a bullish fair value gap, we're gonna print the fair value gap box. We've changed the color here to a nice blue, we've removed the background. And then if we've got a bearish fair value gap, we're gonna print that box as well. We've changed that color to red, so we'll be able to see the difference on the chart. Let's save this and take a look what it looks like. So you can see we've got all these fair value gaps now on the chart. It's marking the imbalances between each candle. If there is an imbalance, we've got the bullish, which are blue, bearish, which are red. Just ignore the trades taken at the moment because that's just the default strategy. We'll remove that later. If you remove it at the moment, you're going to get an error. So the fair value gaps work just like we wanted to. Let's continue to step two and make them time restricted. We want to create a new variable and this is going to be an array. It's going to be an array of boxes. And we're going to store both the bullish and bearish fair value gaps inside this array. We do that by just adding the array name and then plus push to the beginning of this box here. Make sure we close it up. We'll add it to this one here just like that. And then we close it up at the other end. So now when we create these boxes, it also then pushes the boxes inside this array here. So the first step of making it time restricted is that we only want the first fair value gap printed after a certain time. And then now that we've made these arrays here and we're tracking the boxes, which is the fair value gaps, we can check whether or not it's the first or not. So let's go ahead and do the first step of the time restriction. We're gonna add on both these if statements here. So if there's a bullish fair value gap, we're gonna also check for something. We're gonna check if the array size is also smaller than zero or equal to zero. So basically, if we're the first fair value gap that we're making, then we go ahead and create it. If we've already got a fair value gap, so this is like equal to one, then we're not gonna create another one. Let's add this down to the bearish one as well. In its current state, it's only gonna just print one fair value gap and then it's never gonna print again. So what we need to do is every day at a certain time, we're gonna clear this array of boxes. I'm gonna reset it back to zero. We're gonna do that at the certain two times of the day. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna check the hour we're going to check if the hour is equal to 14 
or if the hour equals is equal to 12. If either of those are true and the minute equals zero, so we're only gonna check as soon as it turns on the hour, we're gonna then clear the array of fair value gap boxes. This is gonna set this back to zero. So then once it's zero, we can get the first one again, just like what we've done up here. We also created a variable here called time zone. We, we set it to New York time and we use that inside these functions, hour and minute here. So if we save this, it should print the fair value gaps, the first fair value gap that is available after two o'clock, 2 p.m. and 12 p.m. So on this chart here, you can see it's pretty much removed everything because again, we're only gonna print one after a certain time. We get this one here. So that's a uh, 221. So it's the first fair value gap printed after two o'clock. And you can see two o'clock is there. We get no fair value gaps. That's the first one. It prints the red and that's it. And we take our cell over here. For the bullish, it's 12, that's 12.18 at the bottom there. You check the time. We could go back to 12, which was here. We've created no fair value gaps until 12.18. We get a teeny fair value gap in here and we get the buy just in here as well. So now we have the fair value gaps restricted on time. Let's go do the pivot points. Okay, let's get started on our pivot points, which is step two. First, we're gonna create a variable called pivot length. We're gonna do this so we could easily change this later and, or maybe, maybe make it a user input. Then we're gonna use the inbuilt pivot high and pivot low functions from PineScript and that's going to get us our pivot high and our pivot low. We're going to use our pivot length that we've just created as our left and right bars for both. Okay, so I've just made a two if statements and basically what these do is they're going to track if there is a pivot high and we're going to at the moment just create a sell label and if there is a pivot low, we're going to just create a buy label at the moment. This is just going to show us whereabouts these pivots are on the chart. So you can see there's quite a lot of pivots. The reason there is a lot is because we're using a, a short pivot length number. We're using two. If you change that to something higher, uh, you'll be able to get uh, a bit more distance between these pivots or the, uh, the labels. But this looks good for us. We'll leave ours at two for the moment. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create two new arrays. There's going to be a pivot high array and a pivot low array. And what we're going to do is just going to basically every time there's a pivot high so when there is a pivot high instead of creating a cell label we're going to just get rid of those for now we're going to store the high inside this pivot value array so we're going to do a pivot value push and we're going to push the high that is pivot length ago which is two and we're going to do the same for the cell so we're going to comment this out create a new line we're going to do pivot length sorry pivot low value push we're going to push the low this time and we're going to look push that pivot length bar we go the reason why we're going to store these values in the arrays is because we need to be able to change the arrays we need to be able to change the list let me show you what i mean so like for this instance up here we've got a bearish fair value gap price comes into the bearish fair value gap about here-ish if we just went and used the most previous pivot high that's actually just down here, which is lower than price. And obviously we can't put our stop loss like below our entry for a sell. So what we need to do is basically, as price came up and closed through all these pivot highs, we need to remove them from our array. And that's why we've stored them in an array. We can't do this any other way. But at the moment, we've just got the values getting pushed into the array. We need to create the part that if price closes up through here, we remove all these highs because we can't use these highs they're useless to us and we need to use the highs up here that would be our most recent eligible pivot high so let's make that section the first thing we do is just we're going to check if the pivot high array has got any values in it because if there's no values inside it then we're not going to even bother doing any calculations so if that's bigger than zero we proceed and then what we want to do is we're going to loop through all the values inside that pivot high array and we're going to check if the close is bigger than the last value. And then if it is, we're just going to remove it. So that's what, what that's going to do is that if we've closed like this candle here, we're going to loop through each, each value in the array, this one, this one, this one. And if the close is bigger than the value, remove it. So if the close is bigger than, we're going to remove it. And then again, it loops. So we're going to do that again. If it's closed bigger than it, we remove it and so on until we get up to where the pivot high would be up here. Obviously we haven't closed through it, it's not gonna remove it. 
and that's what we're going to do. So this is just for the pivot highs. We're going to duplicate this and create this for the lows as well. It's basically the exact same except this instance here. We just want to check if the close is lower than the pivot low value because it's, it's going to be flipped. Now that's the pivot section done. Let's move on to the next section. So the final section is just adding everything together. So now we have the fair value gaps at the certain times and we've got the pivots. We just need to check if price comes into this fair value gap, we go ahead and take our position. To start this off, we're first going to check if our array size of fair value gap boxes is bigger than zero. Remember we've created that up here and that's what we store our both bullish and bearish fair value gaps inside. If that is indeed bigger than zero, we're going to then loop through from starting at zero, going all the way to the end of them. And we're going to, each time we loop through, we're going to get that current, uh, current box, and we're going to call it box. So to check for cells, we're going to do this if statement here, if the open is smaller than the box's bottom. So we're going to get the box that is our um, current loop. We're going to get the bottom of that box if the open is smaller than and the high is bigger than the bottom. So that basically means we're coming through the bottom end of it. We're going to, at the moment, we're going to just place a label to sell. But this eventually is where we're going to uh, place our sell order. And we're going to reverse this for buys. So we flip that around for buys. We're going to check if the open is bigger than the box top. So again, we're getting our current box and the top of it, if the open is bigger than and the low is smaller than, so that basically means we're coming from the top side of the fair value gap. We're gonna just create a buy label. Now, if we save this, we should get the buy and sell signals in the right buy and sell spot. So you can see we've got a sell signal right up here. It comes into that fair value gap. We've removed it because we've tapped into it, places the sell, and take it all the way down. Same with this here, there was a teeny fair value gap in here, remember? We've come in, tapped it, we've placed the buy, we've then removed the fair value gap so we don't trigger the buy again, and then perfect, and we've placed the buy and sell. We could maybe have a look, see if we get any more. So we have a sell signal here, probably came into the fair value gap right here, taking it down. What is that? Another sell signal. So price has come into this fair value gap. It's probably placed the pivot high right above here. It's come up, rolled over, and we get a blue, beautiful sell-off. Labels are working perfectly. So let's turn these labels into actual buy and sell entries. Again, so this is our current code for the fair value gap entry box. We basically check if there are any available fair value gaps. If there are, we start to then loop through all of them. For the cells, we basically check if price is coming through from the bottom end of the fair value gap. And if that is the case, we press the cell level, then we remove the box, and we break out of this loop. For the buys, we check if price is coming in through the top end of the box. If that is the case, we press, place a buy label, we remove the box, and then we break out of the loop. Buy and sell labels, let's actually replace them with buy and sell entries. Okay, so we've created two new lines, this line here and this line here. They're going to both open up buy and sell entries respectively. So this one's going to open up a buy entry. You can see we're going long. This one's going to open up a sell entry. And we're going to go short. Now this will work, but the only problem is that this is just going to open up an entry right at the beginning and then we're going to never trade again because we don't actually have any stop loss or TPs programmed in yet. So let's add those in before we save and check this out. Now we've made this in previous videos, basically what we're going to do is we're going to create a new user definable type and we're going to store these values inside of it. We're going to track the bar, so the entry bar, the entry price, the TP and the stop loss. We've created, so this is like the blueprint for it and then we're going to go ahead and use that blueprint to create a buy side and a sell side. You can see we've named it PL here and we're creating a new PL. One for the buy side, one for the sell side. Now we've also created a function. This function is going to draw the red and green boxes on our chart. So they're like stop loss red box and our TP green box. We haven't actually called this function yet. It's just, we've just written out like what it should do. And we're going to call this function down here as well um, while we create and assign all these values. So I've modified this section down here. 
we've added in an extra if statement so we're just going to check if the pivot high value is indeed available because we're going to use that for our stop loss we assign we create a new variable called ph and we get whatever the last pivot high is so if there is one we're going to proceed we grab it and we store the value in ph as well as our cell entry we're also going to assign all these values here so you can see we've created a sell side bar and that is going to be equal to whatever the current bar is sell side entry price so that is like whatever the current price is which is just the close again this this is for this up here sell side stop loss and that's going to be equal to our pivot high which we've just defined up here and then we've got our sell side tp and that's going to be whatever our distance is from our pivot high is so our distance to our stop loss times 1.5 and then we've left the box delete the break now let's do the opposite for our buy side so for the buy side we basically just flip everything around so we first check if the array size of pivot load values is larger than zero so if there is a pivot load that we can actually use we then proceed we get the last pivot load and assign it to a variable called pl we have our buy entry code just like we did before and then we assign all these values here uh, to the buy side PL that we've created. So we've got the buy side bar equals buy index, buy side entry price, which is the close, buy side stop loss, which is our pivot low. And then we have the buy side TP, which is uh, 1.5 times our stop loss. And then we just have the box delete and break code, just like before. Assigns all our stop loss and take profit code, but it doesn't actually execute on anything. So we need to add one little more part just so we could execute on that stop loss and take profit. We're gonna add a section for the buy side, which is this here. We check if we're in any positions. If we are in any positions, we check if our close is bigger than our TP. So basically if we've hit TP or if we've hit our stop loss, we're gonna close our strategy buy. And then we're gonna use this function we've created before. And that's gonna be drawing our red and green uh, P&L boxes on the chart. So just like that, we've plugged in our buy side details on one end and now we're going to use them on the other end. Copy and paste this and use it for the sell side as well. So it's pretty much the exact same. We check if our positions are smaller than zero this time, so we're in a negative position, a sell side, a sell position. And then we just check if our close is hit our TP, so this time it's smaller than, and if our close is hit our stop loss, obviously bigger than we just close our cell position. And then again, we draw our red and green box on the chart. Now, before we save this, let's come down just a little bit further. Let's delete this code because now we have our own strategy, entry and exit code. So we could remove that, get that off the chart. Now let's save this and see how it goes. Look at that. Works just like we expected. We've got the cell right here. It's using our most available, most recently available pivot high. Remember, we've canceled all these highs out it gets the pivot high that's most recently available over here. We use that as our stop loss. We do 1.5 times with four and a half pips perfectly. We sell right at the bottom. We've got a buy down there as well. Let's take a look. That's our sell position. So we use the pivot high right here. It takes the sell. It takes the sell on the next open. Same with this candle as well. Here's a loss. Oh, so close to hitting our TP, comes back in reverse. Maybe in another video we could add in like a break even or something like that. But you can see our buy works super well. That's so close to turn it into a winner. You can see it works just like we wanted. And just like that, we've created our own time-based fair value gap strategy. I hope you learned something watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please give me a like and subscribe. It really helps out my channel. Thanks for watching everyone.